Hello guys, today we're going to be looking at the Nuke 12 mod batch and what this does, it allows you to run Nuke 12 offline off a virtual network card. Now this is the same procedure that I have shown for 3D Max and Maya. And what this does is we're going to look down here. You can see the local connection is up and running. So what we do, okay, is we set up a virtual network card with an internal IP and we run the license server only when we are called for. So here is the batch for Nuke 12. And uh, just to let you know, off the bat, I know people ask this, what happens if I want to run Nuke Studio since it's a different EXE? It's got a different call. You can do that. Yes, you can. Just make sure you add the extension at the end to the EXE. If you don't do that, it'll just run Nuke 12, okay? You, so for every one that you have here, let's say you have Nuke Assistant, okay? Uh, if you run Nuke 12 and you let's say you run Nuke Assistant, it will do already what's there, already on the batch. So you can run them concurrently. It re doesn't matter because once one starts, it enables the license server anyways. So you can run the other one right away. It doesn't really matter. If you're having trouble where one is configured to one another, then I recommend just to do it the way I've been doing it for a while. Run each one individually, okay? So I run Nuke 12, the regular one. This is just a test uh, installation. I don't even know how to run Nuke. Uh, maybe only 5% of what people know. I don't even use it. I'm just doing this so people who have Nuke, who want to stay offline, and they don't want this thing to call out to run it, okay? Now, um, this is for legitimate purposes, so people know and are aware of this. This is so that your network can be down and you can still run Nuke, okay? So here's the batch for it, right here. I'm going to leave it up for a couple minutes so that way you can kind of visualize and see what's going on there. So basically what happens is, is we disable the local network. That's the first thing we do. The next thing we do is we enable the virtual network card. The, the next after that, we enable the license daemon, which is this one right here. So right now it's disabled. We have to start it so we can run the license or it fails. We have an error and it won't start, okay? Then we actually call the main program because the program can't run without the license and the license server. So it's all, all kind of follows each other here. So then after that, the this next part will wait for the EXE to close. So when you exit or file close or X at the top, the next portion will continue. So the license daemon server is disabled and the virtual network card is also disabled. And then your main connection comes back on all automatically, all without you seeing anything. And I'm going to close it now. And I'm going to show you. So this is the batch for it that I just showed you. And then you make a shortcut from that batch here. What you do is you go into the shortcut, run it minimize, so that way you don't see it coming on, up on top, OK? And um, that's pretty much it for there. Change the icon. That's what I did. So at least it looks like, you know, nuke. Okay, so what does this mean now? How, let's take a look at this. So if I run this nuke 12 batch shortcut, it will link to the nuke 12 batch, which will run the commands and do everything I told it. So let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead into uh, the network properties here. I'm going to show you something here so that way you can see it live. Okay, so here's here we go. Okay, we have this here. So um, we're go right now, just leave it as it is. It doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to just disable it for now. Um, it should be disabling itself. I was just doing a test on this. That, that should, that, that's it. It should be good. Disabled. Okay. So let's go ahead and do this. So right now we have VertNet disabled. We have the local network area connection on. What we're going to do is we're going to flip them. We want the local area connection to be off and VertNet to be on and uh, run the commands and do all this stuff automatically. Let's do this. Okay, so the local network area connection has been disabled. VertNet has been turned on and Nuke has been started. And this is exactly what we want. That's pretty much it. Okay, so we're gonna minimize Nuke here. We're gonna refresh here. As I've said before, Windows does not refresh automatically changes here. So you can see now that the Foundry license server is running. That's all we want. It's simplistic. It's really very simple, not very complicated. And 
if you look down here, you're not connected anywhere because let's look at the vertnet properties here. We have the a TCP IP4 and we just made an internal IP of just a whatever, just to fool the program to run. So we have 192.168.5.1, uh, 255.000. It's not, just anything. As long as the program is fooled to run, it doesn't matter if it's correct. <laughs> just, just make sure that it runs. That's all you're caring about, okay? Anyways, that's it for there. That's what the setup is all required for. Now, one thing you have to be very careful with, and I advise you, the MAC network address that comes in with a VertNet is kind of always the same. So you got to be very careful. When you install this, the VertNet network adapter, make sure that you go to advanced and change the uh, MAC address. So you just have to change a few characters around, not too much. That's not the original one that comes with it. Okay, You just change some letters, some words, again, okay, whatever, as long as it works. Okay, so that's good there. And uh, now we're going to exit Nuke and see what happens. Okay, so we're still running Nuke, but we exit and let's see, let's look at the services. So up here, we have the uh, VertNet that's going to be disabled. The local network area connection is going to be enabled. Okay, and we'll look down here, and it's on. We're back on the network, and then we're going to refresh. Again, I apologize, but Windows doesn't refresh that automatically. And you're going to see this set to disabled. There you go. So that's pretty much it. It's very simplistic. It's not very complicated. Uh, not very high-end, but it does work. So if you want to do this, run uh, Nuke 12 offline. This is the only way to do it. Yes, you can use firewalls. You can go through proxies. Yes, you can do that. However, this is the full, right? Full proof way of staying offline permanently until the program is, is exited. After the program exits, the batch continues and finishes off the other commands. So that's as far as I can take it. Um, I did this for me. And I'm showing others, if you have an application that, that you want to write, run offline, uh, you can do that. You can have Photoshop. You can have Reaper run offline. You can have OBS Studio run offline if you want. It just all depends on what program do you have. If you want MS Office to run offline, you can set this up to run offline. It won't have any online capabilities. Just change a few things here, add your main program. That's all you need to do, okay? So at any rate... This is the Nuke 12 batch. I hope that uh, you appreciate it. And uh, stay safe. All these applications are coming home. We know that by now. So be aware of that. And uh, good luck. Thanks for watching. And I'm going to put up the uh, batch one more time so that you can see the commands. And that's basically what the layout of it is. Very simplistic. Okay few more seconds and uh, take care and have a great day.